What is up guys, Taiki here, and what an eventful Monday it has been. So instead of Farms of the Week, I think I'll do Ecosystems of the Week because I think it's more relevant uh, given all the news that's dropped. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. So let's get started. So the general overview of the video is, you now let's go for Phantom, Cello, and I guess like what's happening with Avalanche, like why everything is red, right? Uh, so let's, uh, before, before I get into that, like let me just take a step back, right? Because I know some people might be hurt from the avalanche dump. Some people might feel uh, this FOMO, right? It's really easy to panic sell and FOMO by the pump uh, whenever these things happen, right? Because, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it just feels bad to be down when other tokens are up, right? But let's take a step back, right? Because we know what's about to happen, right? We know that Avi and Curd will, uh, will, will launch in the next couple of weeks, right? On avalanche, unfortunately, I heard it's been delayed a little bit, uh, which... You know, which kind of sucks, but you know, we, we know it's coming and we all know that when it does come, it's going to bring billions of liquidity into the Avalanche ecosystem, right? That's going to happen. We also know that Celo, uh, I guess like a phone-based uh, application, is going to have $100 million in DeFi incentive programs, right? So, I mean, I, this also came from left field, like I didn't even know like like they were that ready, right? They were that ahead. And it's not going to be that big because it's $100 million in, in educational incentives, grant and incentives. So, you know, this is coming. And obviously, Phantom Foundation launching the, one of the largest uh, DeFi liquidity mining programs of all time. It's not really a liquidity mining program, it's like an incentive program. But if you take a step back, like what's happening here, right? Ava Labs, right, is going to be giving away a bunch of tokens to you, right, to us, to use their ecosystem. Phantom is giving away a bunch of their tokens to developers to build on their ecosystem, right? And the devs can do whatever they want with the FTM tokens, right? I'm sure some will do liquidity mining incentives with those Phantom tokens. And Celo is also giving away a bunch of money for DeFi incentive programs, right? So if you take a step back, like these these the, uh, these ecosystems will be giving you money to use them, right? So let's let's not take on that much risk, right? Let's let's take a step back. Let's not really FOMO pie, uh, FOMO pump a uh, FOMO buy the pump on everything, uh, because if you take a let's say even like a one to two month time horizon view on the markets, we know that Avalanche is going to be big. We know that Phantom is going to be big. So let's not get rugged. Let's, you know, be conservative. Let's, you know, let's actually build a plan for the portfolio because if you're panic selling the dump and FOMO buying the pump, then that's just the person that has no plan, right? And it's always good to have a plan. Uh, so let's go over what my plan is, right? Uh, given, given that entire rant. So, so essentially my, my plan right now is, right now like I'm focused on Avalanche um, because yes, like the Phantom token is up, I don't even know, like almost 50%. Uh, and everything in their ecosystem is pumping. Like, look, look at this. Like, if you go to CoinGecko and look at Phantom ecosystem coins, like everything is up. I mean, Spirit, Scream, Tarot, it's up 4x today. Spooky's up double. Like, what the hell? Uh, I think this is signs of the market being more efficient, right? Because if you look back in, in April, when I first started covering the Polygon ecosystem, um, the market didn't really price the $100 million incentive program that Polygon put in place. Because on April 14th, I think the price of Matic was roughly 30 cents. And then obviously it peaked at almost $3 uh, in the middle of May. And I think the market learned from that. And then when Avalanche incent, uh, launched their uh, Avalanche Rush program, like everyone was like, okay, like we all know what's gonna happen. Let's just buy everything on Avalanche and like try to make money. And I think people that missed out on Polygon, people that missed out on Avalanche are like, okay, we saw this, we saw the headline, let's buy everything up. Let's just gobble everything up. And to me, me personally, it, I, I don't feel right like buying these things after it's forexed in 24 hours, especially like as soon as I woke up, um, because uh, I mean we all know what's gonna happen, right? I mean, sure, like maybe you can argue that these are undervalued, but I mean I, I personally just don't want to be buying like people's forexes like in the same day, uh, because maybe this is the market being inefficient in some way. But you know the Phantom uh, incentive program, it's not gonna be launched immediately. In fact, it's gonna take a couple of months for this to play out. So let's actually. Uh, read into the uh, in the in the fine print, right? Because I'm sure a bunch of people just like bought a bunch of coins just because they saw the headline, which I mean, which honestly is not a bad strategy, right? I mean, this is obviously bullish for the Phantom ecosystem, uh, but let's actually look into the fine print. And I guess the one thing I will say is that you know this is super super bullish, medium to long term for the Phantom ecosystem. Short term, uh, I'm not sure, right? Obviously, everything has gone up, but. Uh, in terms of like ecosystem growth, uh, this is super bullish for the medium to long term, right? So let's go over why I think that is. So uh, I guess with, with, with this incentive program, um, they're not gonna be giving, 
giving money away to users like you and I that like Avalanche Rush is doing, they'll be giving money or giving FTM tokens to the developers, right? And the Phantom Foundation says, you know, like instead of us giving money to the users, let's let the developers choose what to do with the FTM token. Because some developers might want to create on app, uh, sorry, create on Phantom, hire more developers with the FTM tokens, right? That's what they want, what they might want to do. But some developers, they might just want to, you know, use the FTM tokens as liquidity mining incentives to, I guess, win liquidity over from other protocols. So how this actually essentially happens is that if you create on Phantom and your protocol can stay uh, above a time weighted average of five to a hundred million dollars of TVL for an extended period of time, you can apply for this grant, right? Uh, you, you essentially have to prove that you're not a scammer, right? Essentially. And once the, once the foundation has approved the application, a two month long cliff commences after which rewards will start to vest on a monthly basis. So uh, I'm assuming what's gonna end up happening is, you know, let's say in September, a bunch of teams are gonna like apply for grants and, you know, like let's say in November, they're gonna get approved. And then starting November, uh, their rewards will start to vest on a monthly basis. So I don't really see like a huge rush into Phantom in terms of like, you know, five, ten billion dollars of TVL until like November. Um, obviously if Aave launches like in October, that's gonna change, but uh, assuming uh, assuming that like nothing else changes outside of this like this pure liquidity mining program, uh, sorry, like incentive program, um, I don't really see this being a huge deal uh, in the short term, right? Obviously, everything has gone up because people are, are speculating uh, and they want to buy low, sell high. Uh, but you know, in as as I as more of like a farmer, as a person that's going to be using these protocols, um, me personally, I'm still not that interested in bridging funds over because I think in the short term, Avalanche still has. Uh, I guess the, the short-term gains, right? The short-term liquidity, uh, liquidity shock. Because you know, let's let's say this thing blows up in November, right? Maybe the price of Phantom is already high uh, by then, but um, you know, th there's not much you can do right now other than uh, play around in the existing farms in this ecosystem, right? I'll go over them later. Actually, let's go over them now. So uh, I'll just go over three uh, three farms that I think are good. Um, so obviously, Spooky and Spirit Swap, they're the two main dexes. Uh, they're competing with one another, which I think is good, right? You always want to, uh, to, to decentralize exchanges so they can like you know keep competing, keep innovating, etc. Uh, so, and if you think about the game theory uh, behind Spirit and Spooky, is that like, let's let's be real, they're, they're gonna be approved right for this grant, uh, and they're definitely gonna be giving away, at least in my opinion, Phantom to its users because let's say your Spooky swap right and Spirit swap starts doing liquidity mining programs. If you're spooky, are you really gonna like let them do that and like not do anything, right? Because if that happens, Spirit is gonna take away take away all the liquidity because that's where the incentives are. So I think game theory wise, like they both have to do liquidity mining uh, incentives with FTM tokens, right? Like let's say in uh, November. Uh, so I think this will be a really good farm uh, uh, for people to participate in. Another one that I want to go over is Tarot. Um, this is like leverage uh, liquidity leverage LP positions. Um, always doing research. I haven't done that much due diligence on this, but I, I hear that this is really, really good. Uh, essentially, you can use your LP position as collateral, borrow more against it, and then use that to LP, etc. And I, the cool thing is that you can actually just supply liquidity. Uh, I'm, I, I don't think I'm connected. Well, actually, yeah, I am. You can actually um, deposit, sorry, you can lend USDC here, right? And earn 105% in USDC. Uh, paid some in USDC, paid some in Tarot which I think is obviously which is pretty, pretty good, right? So uh, there, there is risk, right? This is, I don't, I don't even know if this is audited, uh, so always do your own research. Uh, I'm not a huge expert when it comes to Phantom. Um, in fact, uh, I think the one expert that you all should follow is this channel called FTM Alerts. Um, I actually had a conversation with him like two weeks ago uh, when I was like doing my due diligence. And as you can see with like these, these red bars, like I've, I've been watching a bunch of his videos. I think they're good. Um, I guess this is proof that I actually do research, uh, but I think he is one of like the FTM mega bulls that you should follow. Uh, he covers a bunch of, I mean, he made a video today about like spooky swap, right? So um, I'm gonna have him on the channel next week probably uh, to discuss what's hot on Phantom, why is he so bullish, I guess give his bullish cases and like how, how he built his conviction. So look out for that video, I think it'll be a good one. Uh, I'll provi provide a link to this in the description below. So make sure to subscribe to his videos. Okay, so <laughs> where was I? Yeah, so Phantom. Uh, markets pricing things in. Uh, obviously, this is really, really bullish. Uh, but in the short term, I don't really see like something crazy happening on Phantom, right? Maybe I'm wrong, right? Like I've been wrong before. But 
That's what I see. So I think in the short term, I think me personally, I'll just be staying on uh, Avalanche, uh, just waiting for these uh, incentives to come because when they come, they're going to be really, really, really good, right? So my, I guess like my timeline, which can always change is September, October, maybe focus on Avalanche, maybe bridge some funds to Solana uh, if, it, you know, if, if some bullish catalysts go there. Uh, and then in November, I'll reevaluate things. Obviously, I'm making this video on August 30th, and I'm sure my plans will change uh, in like a couple of weeks. But that's just how I'm thinking about it right now. Um, there's a lot of, I guess, hype around uh, Phantom, Cello, and you know, the question is like, is Avalanche dead? Uh, I, I don't think Avalanche is dead. Uh, we all know what's going to happen. Like, what do you think is going to happen when Avi and Curve launches, right? So much money will flow into the ecosystem. I guess in terms of like, let me just refresh this page. So. I'll also provide a link to this in the description below, but you can actually track like uh, how much money is entering and leaving the Avalanche ecosystem. Uh, as you can see, like the green bar is like how much is coming in and the red is how much it's coming out. Yet yesterday we saw like the first red day in history, right? Uh, and today it seems red as well. Uh, so maybe in the short term, there's like a lull in the markets and all of the mind share goes to Phantom, right? Because that's where everyone's looking at. But I don't think this changes anything. Um, I, I still think Avalanche is still going to have a bunch of liquidity come, come over once Aave and Curve launches. Hopefully it comes soon uh, because, yeah, obviously the market looks red. Um, but uh, I, I guess like to people that are kind of scared, like they don't have a plan. Uh, they want to know like what the hell should I do? Uh, the one data point that I always turn into is I guess like the thesis is that there's always a flight to safety when it comes to these ecosystems. Because, you know, I kind of compare the reason I was so bullish on Avalanche a couple of weeks ago was because, you know, I was on Polygon, right? And liquidity mining incentives are really, really bullish for ecosystems. And we saw this when, uh, like, Aave on Polygon was announced April 14th, when the price of QuickSwap was $150. And then two weeks later, it peaked at, like, almost $1,500, right? It's just 10x. And the date uh, for the QuickSwap peak was April 30th. So let's, so like hypothetically, like where do you think Matic, like when did the price of Matic peak, right? And actually, the price of Matic was actually like 80 cents on April 30th and it peaked on May 18th, right? So essentially my thesis is that like, sure, like these altcoins might enter a huge bubble, like everyone just like FOMOs into them, but there's always going to be a flight to safety, right? And the safety is always going to be the native token, right? AVAX. Uh, and you know maybe maybe we're gonna see that playing out. Um, obviously, like Avalanche will underperform like all of these tokens to the upside, but it'll also outperform everything to the downside, right? Because it's a higher market cap coin, and there's like naturally more demand for uh, Avax tokens. So that that's why like Avax is always the largest holding. And you know if you're more risk averse, if if you're like a risk averse player, uh, I think if you're bullish on Avalanche, you just buy Avax, uh, deposit it on Banky or Neil, and. To, I guess like more reasons to show that like uh, where you are still really really early into the Avalanche ecosystem is by looking at the liquidity profile for uh, for Avalanche because if you go to Pingolin and you let's let's say you, like you want to swap hundred thousand dollars of USDC to Tether like you're gonna incur twenty three percent slippage right this just means that like there's no liquidity for USDC right now and. I mean, sure. I mean, you you can interpret this to be bearish, but I interpret this to be we are early. We are we are early. As Benki announced today that uh, their their liquidity mining initiative for USDC is live today. Uh, so if you deposit USDC on Benki, uh, you'll be earning uh, AVAX and key rewards. Uh, so hopefully, this incentivizes more people to bridge USDC over from uh, Ethereum or Polygon to AVAX. Uh, and obviously, um, when when a curve launches, like this de-pegging uh, aspect, I mean, it's not really just de-pegged, it's just like no liquidity, that'll be fixed, right? Because the, the reason curve is so important is because curve is the reason why stable coins are pegged to each other everywhere, uh, because that's that's what curve does, right? And that's why curve is so important. So yeah, hopefully Benki comes. So let me just touch on, uh, oh, so speaking of Avalanche DeFi, I did a live stream with Crypto Messiah and Noah Seidman yesterday. Um, it's a two hour video, it's a long one. Uh, I know people don't want to watch a two-hour video, so I, I added timestamps uh, if people want to like just skip through everything uh, and go over, I guess, topics that you're interested in. Uh, so check out that video below. Uh, let me refresh this. I think it's almost like 8,000 views or whatever. Uh, it was a good one. It was a good one. Yeah, 8,000 views. So 
good video. Uh, check it out if you want to learn more about how, I guess, crypto OGs are thinking about the Avalanche ecosystem. So just quick updates on the Terra ecosystem, right? Because, uh, I mean, I, I didn't forget about you guys. <laughs> uh, I, I'm still super bullish Terra. But, you know, I sold all my Mirror tokens. Uh, just because, like, I mean, I love Mirror. I think it's a great form, but I'm just going to use Mirror as a revenue source, right? It's, it's just a way for me to, I guess, make more dollars. And let's look over here. So this is my setup uh, this morning, right? When I haven't done anything, right? My setup is still pretty nice. Uh, I had $475 with Mirror. My Luna's up a lot. Uh, but today, I took some profits. Uh, I sold my... Uh, okay, this is like profit-taking. Essentially, I just took... Uh, $475 mirror and sold it for USD and I deposited it into Anchor, right? So, you know, it used to be 17K and now it's 17.45K, right? So now, you know, I sold my mirror, I farmed it for free essentially, and now I'm earning 19.5% on Anchor. Cool. But what am I doing with Anchor, the token, right? Um, so one thing that you should note is that uh, there's going to be an airdrop for Anchor stakers, uh, governance stakers, uh, for this protocol called Nexus Protocol. Um, I don't really know how much they're going to be airdropping, right? Uh, so I have no idea, but because, you know, they're going to be taking a snapshot of all the addresses that's been staking their anchor, you know, I'm just going to stake my anchor and hopefully uh, then this is a big airdrop, right? Uh, uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And if you look at this tab, yeah, I put all my anchor here, uh, earning 7%, so I can expect to earn $22. Obviously, I'm still farming anchor, but you know, I'm just staking it and not selling it because of the airdrop. And in terms of bullish catalysts, I feel like every every single week the TVL on Anchor is going up. And you know, if you looked at my Columbus Five video with that I did with Joseph and Danku, you know, UST is the most important asset in the Terra ecosystem because as there is more demand for UST, uh, Luna has to be burnt, right? It's like I, I like to call this like Ponzinomics, but like not actually a Ponzi, just because I mean we can actually track the demand for UST, and as, as long as that's going up, we can expect the price of Luna to appreciate as well. So I think I covered a bunch of things that I wanted to cover. Uh, hopefully this hasn't been too long a video. Um, I'll, I'll add timestamps. Um, but uh, I guess like, what I'll be doing is that, you know, I'm not gonna be deploying assets on Phantom, uh, partly because of the reasons I mentioned, but also because I'm going on vacation uh, from September 1st to September 5th. Uh, this is gonna be with my college and high school buddies uh, that I haven't seen in a while. And, you know, for those that don't know, like I played poker professionally and, you know, uh, when I first went to Vegas, I lost 5k uh, for the World Series of Poker. Uh, so this is going to be my redemption, right? Like I'm so much more studied. Uh, like, I, I mean, I was like, I locked myself in a room last year to study poker, essentially to be a pro. But, you know, I'll be in Vegas uh, from September 1st to September 5th. I'll still post videos that I'll be pre-recording. Um, but... You know, this is essentially like my last trip with the boys, I guess, uh, before I really put my head down uh, into crypto and I guess uh, other life pursuits because uh, September 7th, tentatively, uh, I'll be launching my Patreon. I'll, I'll uh, provide more details later, but, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go in really, really hard. Um, it's it's going to be like a project that I'll be uh, putting a lot of my time into. So look out for that. Uh, so, you know, uh, I guess... You know, this is the lesson of like farm based around like what your life situation is, right? Because if you're going to go on vacation, you can't be Dijon farming. So uh, I'll mostly be exposed to AVAX. Uh, that's been my play for a while now, but I, I'm still going to do that. Uh, and, you know, I'll still hold some other ecosystem plays. But I, in terms of sizing, like it, it, it's nothing compared to AVAX, right? And I haven't really done any other changes to my portfolio, right? I'm still like in this comfy scenario where... Uh, my Luna price, or I guess, yeah, my, I'm, I'm still holding on my Luna. I'm still borrowing against it, uh, right? These APRs have gone down significantly, but, you know, I mean, you're still being paid 10% to borrow, right? Uh, and it's actually not 10%, right? Because it's 10% plus, well, assuming what you want to do with your USD, you can be paid 10% to borrow, but you can deposit the USD back into here and earn 19.5%, right? So Luna, amazing, uh, yield on yield on yield. Um, you know, I, I feel like with Avalanche and with Luna, I feel like once you bridge funds over, uh, it's kind of difficult to bridge funds back to Ethereum just because Ethereum is like so expensive. Uh, so hopefully, um, this is a good video, long one, but uh, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, so much, so much things happening. You, you, you really got to be on top of your toes uh, because I mean, things can change on a dime, right? I mean, who really saw this coming? I didn't. I actually did the research. 
But anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one and have fun farming out there.